I couldn't tell if I was taking a still picture or a video. Hi, I thought that I was good. Oh, the last time I got the picture of terrible new ones. I thought that I was um, over the PTSD and that my injuries were getting better. I should really be doing Dr. Brett Jones, the chiropractor. They just, everybody's called by their first name there. Dr. Brett, Dr. Dylan, Dr. Um, Lauren. It's like an equal number of lady and men doctors. Lady and guy. Lady and gentleman doctors. Um, Dr. Brett Jones is a gentleman, even though he says fuck. And now the only word fuck is in the title of this book. Anyway, I thought I was pretty much over my PTSD and the injuries were getting better from the accident. Um, January 11th, the accident slash incident, because people yelling at each other and then starting to push each other and type stuff it was actually a big part of why it turned into PTSD. It was just, it was just, um, yeah. I'm not going to say that. Um, I'm not going to say things that aren't entirely true in so much detail here at this moment. So look at the blue outside. And there's doves out there. And the, um, the window treatment is torn. That's a new phrase I learned in the last few, uh, few years, window treatment. There used to be a really beautiful window treatment in the bedroom, but then my boyfriend put it in one of the other properties. And I was up kind of early on. I didn't have much of a proprietary interest in this place, but I've always missed it. It was white with a red, a red in the middle, gauzy white with red in the middle. So I thought the PTSD and the injuries were getting better, but the PTSD was gone. But I just had this dream where um, my late husband, Claude Steiner, uh, whose name would help elevate this channel, I looked him up on YouTube yesterday in the evening before the memorial and his videos have like 26, 36,000 views and all of the most, the most views I have on any of my videos are two with him in it. Third most views is 26, which is a big drop down from 148, 184 to 56 to 26. And that's because that video has the word naughty and sexy in the title. And I kind of have a blowjob face in the thumbnail. So, media. I won't say YouTube because I like YouTube. Um, so I just had this dream that my late husband invited, wasn't present, but invited like 50 to 100 hippies to stay in the house. And, um... I think it was this connected to a dream where I was in college, but I was showing up like at the end of my second class, you know, like in other words, fucking up, um, which is not me. I, I, when I was in college at UC Berkeley, um, like if I mistook uh, Professor Janet Broughton's philosophy of mind class or any class, um, cause I was sick. I would, I was, I was like, I would regret it anyway. So, um, I just woke up with a start and my boyfriend was startled awake and he put his arm around me and he said, I saved you. He said, I, I saved you. And I said, Holly, Holly Berry made me, made me coffee when I wanted tea. And he said, oh, bitch, cause he's a, an Enneagram type seven and they are relentlessly playful, but he has a major four fix. So when he's in a maudlin mood or Maudlin is kind of a harsh word when he's in a poignant mood, self-pity mood. It's um, Katie lock the door. Um, but sometimes that's very beautiful. His poignant moods are very beautiful. Anyway, so I've essentially said what I wanted to say. Um, the dream is evidence of some of my PTSD. Although I was having dreams months ago, I was having dreams where I would wake up and oh, someone's trying to kill me. I've had many, many, many of those in my life. But they re right after the PTSD, which was primarily trauma nightmares, like the worst nightmares I've ever had, except one about my mom when I was 20. 
on Easter morning, right before going to Glide Memorial Church. I was like holding myself and rocking back and forth and just spiritually shivering all through that amazing performance of Reverend Cecil Williams at Glide Memorial Church. My fiance and his mother took me there. I woke up in the morning and at a time when I wasn't a drinker particularly at all, went straight for the refrigerator and drank vodka. I think I tried to wake my fiance up and he was like, mm. so I just like, we had a kind of a nice apartment because we turned the bedroom into a living room. We turned the walk-in closet into our bedroom. So we were able to have a nice apartment and a little tender knob, which means an area where Tenderloin and Knob Hill intersect, which is where all the hookers are. Anyway, as I was sleeping on my, like in my, in the middle of my thigh, like this huge neuralgia that felt like a colonic spasm, almost as painful as that, which is kind of like chest wall pain, um, except it's really terrible. Colonic spasms are the worst, like you are in the grocery store and all and reaching for a product on the shelf and all of a sudden you can't move. Um, I've not had one of those in years, but they're terrible. Incapacitating. Um, anyway, so, yeah, and then I've started to have neuralgia pains, like, you know that line from Throw Mama from the Train? I just got a migraine in my left eye. Well, it wasn't a migraine, but it's like, headache in the left eye. Oh, it feels better. No, nope, headache in the left eye. When I have the sciatica, which I used to have every afternoon, I would drink tea to help me digest lunch, and then soon I would have sciatica while I was rushing around to get ready to go for a walk, and all through my walk. That's how I ended up taking Ambient all through my walks, which made everything so vivid and present and beautiful. And then my husband bullied me into getting off it, and you know, I don't have access to it anymore. It was a great treatment for neuralgia, fibromyalgia, neuralgia, nerve pain for me. Anyway, oops, don't show the teeth. I do something about those teeth. At the minimum, maybe pressure. So anyway, yeah, PTSD and injury is pretty complicated. I should be going to Dr. Brett Jones three times a week. Um, shoulder. Shoulder. Salacious. Watch my channel. Mr. V, you wanted risque or something, so there you have it. Um, yeah, so these hippies were smoking a lot of pot, and um, I tried to roll a joint, but it was, like, huge. And I didn't want anybody to see it. And I think my cat or some kind of pet was with me. And there was like a big stone circle with a fire in the middle. And I put a kettle on it. And I walked away. When I came back, Holly Berry had made me coffee instead of tea. And it was bedtime. And I thought, doesn't coffee have like way more caffeine than tea? And besides, I was supposed to smoke pot. I can't really smoke pot. Everything gets too close and too far away. And time slows down too much. That's I can't smoke it more. The dozen times I already have of disturbing that. Well, so much for my mini mouse look with the straight hair. It didn't really work out. I'm gonna filter this. <laughs> if this were a still picture, I could put like unlimited number of filters on it practically. But well, not unlimited, a lot. I could adjust saturation, hue, brightness exposure light source um, simulation, all kinds of stuff. But you can just use one filter on the um, free YouTube app that I have. Um, yeah, so... Well, yeah, so then I yelled at Holly Berry and I said, get out. And she was like, what? And I was like, you're not particularly worse than the rest of them, but um, why do you get to treat the hostess this way? Get out of my house. And that's when I kicked in bed at my boyfriend put his arms around me to protect me. At least nobody was trying to kill me. It was another one of these kind of home invasion of too many guests that I didn't invite, which ever since my husband died and left the house to his kids instead of me. I should have known because he promised them the house. And then all of a sudden he was like, I'm leaving you my half of the house because he'd already sold. He promised them the house and he sold half of it. That's a broken promise. Then, so that it was implied that they would inherit the other half of the house. And then he promise that to me. So that's a broken promise to them. But I thought it was mostly a sentimental thing because I was too naive to understand that a $1.2 million house will be a $2 million house by the time he dies. If he had lived as long as people expected, it would have been a 
seven five million dollar house at least. Because some people think it's already a two point five million dollar house with modest renovations. BF is a real estate person. My BF. Heart. Okay, I don't think there's anything further to say. Look at how pretty that window is. Can I situate myself in front of the window? Sorry, I'm looking at this point. Um, speaking of neck, this is the um, Nora Ephron, I hate my neck moment. There we go. No, this is not working out so well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is just not working out. Time to quit while I'm ahead. Oh, that's okay. Goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you so much for watching this morning or afternoon or evening or what time, whatever time it is, where you are. Oh, you big, strong American subscriber. Who are you? I'm doing gal. Good dot. But I am not Wonder Woman. Bye. This is not the mascara. Uh -uh. Bye. Can I get my hand in the shot? Oh yeah, I think it's a missed opportunity. <laughs> there is my hand. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye, bye. Bye from not the mascara. Bye.